Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday Leading Change episode this week with Chris Foley. Hi, Chris. Welcome back. Hi, Vasco. Great to be back. Thank you. Absolutely. So, Chris, Wednesdays are all about our role as leaders in change processes. Now, this could be a personal change, a team level change or organizational change. Uh, At the end, the level of change doesn't really matter. But what does matter and what we want to hear is the tools, the tips, the tricks, the techniques you learned through that one change process that you still use today. So share that story with us, Chris, a story of a change process that you were involved with and walk us through the steps and the takeaways so that we may all get better at working with change. Sure. So the example I I give here is around uh, the planning process. Some time ago, you know, we were focused on quarterly planning so we would plan every quarter and you know it was firstly we would finish our development and then we would go into kind of a planning mode for a few days and uh, you know there would be a lot of emphasis on it uh, even the engineering teams very much dragged into it and the output of it was kind of you know a number of kind of work items if you want to call it that and uh what was happening was that the you know these work items said oh yeah we'll do these over the the next quarter so there was big commitments made then what happened was the work item would land on one of our teams and once that was opened up and actually really fleshed out a bit and refined there was some you know the team would come back and say well actually maybe we can't do this you know this is not achievable etc cetera, etc cetera. So then there was some chaos, you know, in the early kind of first month of that quarter, trying to align ourselves and get get, uh, what can be done, what can't be done. So we were wasting that kind of time, again, in that early planning phase, right? So we needed something to try and, uh, I suppose, you know, resolve them issues. And what we tried to put in place was we, we called it at the time continuous planning. So the first thing we had to do was engage with the stakeholder and say, you know, look what's happening here. You know, you know, we're you're giving us light line items and we agree on it. And then when we open them up, actually, maybe they're not achievable. Um, so we wanted to have an early kind of refinement, nearly a product level refinement with some technical details done before, uh, say, that line item or that Jira Epic would land on the team. So the first thing was, again, engage with the stakeholders to make them aware of what, what was happening. And, and they were in, in a sense, but again, calling it out and trying to get to the nub of the problem. And the next thing, we, we provided some value mapping for them and said, look, if you get this line item in, if we can flesh it out to a certain level, then, you know, we can get to the point where, yes, the team can consume this work and execute on it. So what we done was we created a uh, fairly simple process that they would create a Jira Epic for their line item. There would be a very small document written in conjunction with the stakeholder that would look at just the scope of the ask, a very high level view of how it would be solved, the solution, if there was any kind of interdependencies with other systems. So we called it an Epic Brief. So we put that in place and um, so th- it's that early refinement that we l- were looking for. And what what happened was once, and then we got them signed off, right? So really kind of an agreement from the stakeholder and the engineering teams to say, yes, we understand this piece of work now at a high level. And both of us are happy with the direction it should go. So then it dropped into our engineering teams. And at that point, they would task it out to low level tasks. But the, uh, the ambiguities and uh, the kind of open questions had been addressed at that point. So then once we got that in play, what was happening was we would have actually a continuous planning meeting with the stakeholders every at the start of every sprint. 
even though these weren't really sprint related tasks, right? And we would get them to prioritize two or three epics because we had two or three development teams at the time. And we would assign an epic that would need, we call it needed elaboration, right? Uh, so that early refinement, we call it just elaboration. We would assign that to one of our tech leads. So the key here was we assigned ownership. So that, that epic would need to kind of start elaboration and get to a kind of a signed off state. But we had a driver for that, right? So it was up to that team lead to drive that epic and engage with the stakeholders primarily at that time to, to make sure it would get to the point where, yes, there's now general agreement of where this should go. And before it ever went to the lower level of refinement, right into the, our teams. So I think we, we kind of set work in progress limits, then we would only have three approximately epics in elaboration at any one time. So we were kind of using some kind of even Kanban uh, principles there, but in that early phase of refine, refinement. So, and then we were engaging with our um, with our stakeholders, as I said, every three weeks on the early elaboration phase, as well as the sprints were ongoing as well, right? The teams were still working. So I think once the stakeholders saw the value, then they engaged fully um, and it, it actually became very successful for us. Yeah, for, for me, the, the key aspect of this story is how first you started by explaining the problem. Uh, and uh, I'm guessing that uh, as you develop that new process, maybe we dive into that a little bit, uh, you know, creating the epics in JIRA and, and having those, you call them continuous planning meetings at the start of every sprint. I'm guessing that you were at the same time kind of iterating the process together with the stakeholders, correct? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So like our, our, our standard development process was spinning uh, in the background, right? So we still had our sprint planning. We had our sprint review. So they were working on epics that were fully fleshed out, fully tasked out, fully estimated. But the, the early phase of refinement was now happening in a kind of a separate process that was uh, working in parallel. But the early refinement was was queuing up epics with and you know refined to a level where they could be consumed fully without difficulty by the engineering teams. Uh, so there was two processes running parallel. So and and I think the the stakeholders fully got the value because they prioritized what should be kind of coming in and then they were still seeing what's coming out right uh, on the other end so absolutely and uh, that for me what what we are trying to build when we build such a, a process which is in fact a, a series of rules for collaboration right in this case with the stakeholders is that we're providing more transparency since now they are involved more often, but we're also helping the team succeed because, as you said, you're, uh, I believe you said, opening up those one-liners that usually would be taken into a long, uh, perhaps even quite boring planning effort and then come up with numbers and that would once the team picked up the items, not really match up to reality, right? And And you were trying to solve a problem that was a pain for the stakeholders as much as it was for the teams. Yes, exactly, exactly. That, that everybody was suffering here, right? Because as you said, once we did open up the one-liner and seeing the potential difficulties underneath or maybe even the numerous solutions or approaches we could take, you know, so there, there needed to be discussion there. So all we done was we kind of, we brought that discussion to an earlier phase that we could work with the stakeholders. So they become fully aware of the intricacies of that one liner, what's really meant there, what, you know, and then agree a scope, agree a high level approach. And then you, what you're looking for is you're looking to feed the team refined work that they can execute on. Um, and we were missing that piece in the middle that what was coming in wasn't refined enough. So we put this in place and, and now, uh, you know, everybody gets value. Right? And as you say, very transparent across the board. 
Absolutely. Uh, that was a, a great story. Also a reminder that uh, sometimes you need to solve problems together and that change happens through that interaction of defining the problem, trying different things uh, and working with the people that, that will benefit directly from the problem. In this case, it was both the team and the stakeholders. Uh, but of course, you talked and, and worked specifically with stakeholders to find a solution, which is a, a great example. Thank you for sharing that, Chris. Thank you, Vasco. Leading change is one of the core skills we must acquire, but it is only one of the steps towards our success as Scrum Masters. Tomorrow, on Success Thursday, we will talk about how to define success for the Scrum Master role, we'll cover tips on how to measure your way to that position, and most importantly, how to develop that focus on continuous improvement that is as important for Scrum Masters as it is for teams. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring. Mm-hmm.